And the winner of the 2012 Nokia Business Innovation Award is Maureen Clifford. Thank you, everyone. When I was 15, my headmaster told my parents they might as well take me out of school because I was never going to amount to anything. I'm so happy that he was wrong. <laughs> At 17, I was married. At 25, I was a widow with two children aged seven and eight. No insurance, no car, no house. I was on a widow's benefit, which is hard, restricted existence. I don't say this with sympathy because this was like a lifetime ago for me. My hope is that my story will inspire other women out there to look at what they need to do to improve, to alter their situations and take actions needed. It's not just how you handle the impact of what's happened. When you are ready to move on, it's how you plan to improve your situation. I knew I needed an education because I remember I, was, I left school really early. So I knew I needed an education to be able to change my circumstances. And so I set out on um, several years of study. It's like I was given a second chance. Looking at studying for three or four years when you have things like childcare issues, transport issues, financial issues, it seems like it's just too hard and it seems like it's going to take forever. But when I looked back on those years after I'd finished, it seemed like it had gone in a flash. Yes, it was hard. Usually the last thing you want to do when you tuck your children in at night is to have several more hours sitting there studying. But what pulls you through is the long-term hope and dream that you're actually going to be able to make something of yourself and improve your life for yourself and your children. And it really is just a short space in time. So where am I now? I'm the CEO and co-founder of Endeavour. Endeavour was founded 14 years ago as an IT consulting company selling and implementing Oracle products. Back in 2007, I had an idea for an environmental accounting and reporting solution that would account for the emissions from all the sources of greenhouse gases and convert them into CO2, which is the common reporting. I also wanted to account for other environmental factors like water and waste, and also wanted to make sure that it was suitable for international requirements. I had an accounting background um, after my years of study. I had become an accountant. And so I was used to accounting for dollars and cents where always there was 100 cents in every dollar. Greenhouse gases are a lot more complex. Each emission source like electricity or the combustion of diesel can have many gases associated with it and each has a different global warming potential, making calculations actually a lot more complex than dollars and cents. But despite my ever-growing, uh, changing and growing requirements, I had a wonderful team who was able to take um, what I had thought of and actually make it a real product. Most of the large construction companies in Australia, among many other companies, including some now international ones, operate this product. In 2010, Oracle in America called and asked if we were interested in selling our IP. After many months of due diligence, Oracle purchased it last year, and it's now part of Oracle's base system available to be sold all over the world, and it's now conversion into several languages. I was lucky enough to be in San Francisco about six weeks ago for the annual Oracle conference, and I heard two customer sessions talking about our product. One said it was like night and day using our product compared to the spreadsheets they used to have to use before. They used to take seven and a half months to input data into spreadsheets and they only got one report at the end of it, whereas now using our product they can get reports daily or weekly and really make a difference in being able to reduce their emissions. And they will have a return on investment within two years. The other customer I heard speak had installed a solution in their operations in 72 countries. 
and they previously used 100 people to enter data into spreadsheets. I left feeling immensely proud that I had contributed in a positive way to make a difference that matters to our future and helping companies prevent the ever-increasing problem of the damage we're doing to our environment. Working in IT, you don't often get the chance to get that feeling. Innovation helped our company succeed through the global financial crisis, and we now have a new division that consults in areas like environmental strategy, environmental issues and audits, and now where clients are having opportunities and risks associated with a price on carbon, we have consultants that work in that area. We have diverse work. We've got people out on the pig farm assessing the carbon offsets from flaring methane <laughs> to assisting a large company in Australia with their carbon neutral strategy. And this has nothing to do with IT. So we've been able to diversify because of innovation. Innovation gives inspiration. It inspires others to come forward with ideas. It can change people's careers and it gives people new focus and it's a great morale booster. Thank you, Nokia, for sponsoring an innovation award and recognising the importance of innovation. And thank you, Telstra and the other award sponsors.